Hello, 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 Spriggans. We're going to be going over the 7.1 Crossroads info, changes, and also what to prepare for the patch. Let's go. All right, 7.1 Crossroads coming November 12th. Um, if you don't know how to get to this special site here, if you just go to the Lodestone, which you can access from in-game, um, it will bring you here and you go to News, and right here, Crossroads, and you can click on View the Special Site. Here we are, we have everything you want to know that's coming out. We have the trailer. Um, this does contain spoilers, so I won't be showing it on here. There will be images in this, so there will be spoilers there. So we're going to be continuing MSQ. Hopefully going on some new adventures as well with some of our beloved uh, NPCs. So first off, we're going to continue on our journey uh, throughout the new lands. And it looks like we're going to be wrapping up uh, Wuklamot and Sphine's story a little bit. Uh, if just a little recap, we went through all of the trials and then we helped Wuklamot and Kona become the new Dawn servants. We were left with some pretty sad moments in the story, but also some pretty inspiring moments. So there's going to be new challenges. So we also have the Alliance raid. And uh, we're going to be doing content from the game Final Fantasy XI. So the Echoes of Vanadiel. And we are going to have a brand new Alliance series. This is going to be awesome. Uh, so we're going to be able to get some new gear from that. As you can see, these wonderful screenshots here. So this looks like a really beautiful area. And they went over a bunch of this in the producer of the letter live. If you want a more more details on that it looks like like so much more vegetation detail um which is great you know they've been adding a lot of this into all the new dawn trail areas and they're going they're working backwards so they're going to be adding more vegetation in the earlier zones as well so this is the kind of detail that we're going to be expecting to be going forward which is amazing here we are one of the bosses look at those giant fizz weapons this fight looks chaotic and fun just from this image alone i am very excited we also have the classic uh, spikes on the ground so there's going to be some play from that if you didn't do the alexander raid series then you know all about that so very fun mechanics forward to here is the raid sets um i don't particularly like these ones it is all very similar across the board you can't really tell who's who um, but it's probably going to be more thematic with everything and I wonder how these will die if they do die Especially with the two die system And yeah, there's another photo of her. Okay, and oh one more So we've got super high detail here uh, Lots going on. This looks like one of those one of the main cities in Final Fantasy 7 I didn't play that game. So it'd be very interesting to go through here and to see uh, the homage they did for it all right, we're going to get a new dungeon with new gear. So let's take a look at this. The name of it is the Ueyawata Field Station. I probably butchered that as usual. So it looks like we're continuing to go through. There might be some re rebellions happening. Maybe that's why it's happening in uh, this area. It's outside of Yasani Station. So we're going through and it's an interior dungeon. We got this funky guy here and here we can see which classes are actually wearing which armor here so we can deduce which one is which here um so starting from the left we have our fizz ranged here and then this red one is the healer i think a lot of people speculate that this the white one is going to heal but the if you look in this image this is a sage and they are wearing the red armor there then we probably have um melee here i'm thinking this is going to be our Dragoon Weeper set and then here is our tank right here in the middle pretty cute outfit I'm really liking all of the little details especially the shoulder pads and everything they put into all this and then here is our Ninja Viper so we can see in this previous screenshot right here that is definitely a Viper and you can see the tank set being worn on this person here this one is most likely the caster because it's very similar to the healer set and then that would leave our monk samurai set over on the end here the purple and the white 
We're getting a new trial, so we're getting the extreme version of Skeen's Burden. This was a very fun fight in, in the normal version, so I can't wait to see what we will be uh, doing mechanics-wise for this fight. There were some really wacky mechanics in this one, and uh, it, was, it felt very fast-paced, even though the mechanics weren't that fast, but the, the pacing of the fight felt really good. And of course, uh, we're going to be getting the new wings that come with it. We have a new ultimate raid. This is going to be in patch 7.11, so not the first week. Um, it will be coming later. Um, so for all you ultimate raiders, please look forward to that. So, so there is not a massive gear and food and everything rush for this ultimate raid. It is coming later, so you can relax, do MSQ. And uh, we're also getting the new Chaotic Alliance raid, but that's coming in patch 7.15, asterisk. It's actually coming one week after the release of patch 7.15. So this is going to be our new uh, Savage Raiding series for Alliance raid. So 24 man seven Savage, they're calling it Chaotic. So just to not confuse it with Savage Raiding, it is going to be called Chaotic, so 24 man harder difficulty alliance raids. So this looks really awesome. I hope that the, um, the Cloud of Darkness fight, I think this is how they really envisioned it at the beginning, but they just couldn't do it way back then in, in A Realm Reborn. Um, so this looks awesome. All right, uh, new Unreal, the Jade Stoa. This is a very fun fight. If you haven't do it, haven't done it yet, this is a great opportunity to do this fight. It is uh, chaotic fun. You get sent up flying into the air. You gotta dodge all these things. It's really great. Um, it's honestly a really fun fight. So if you haven't done this one, now's your chance to relive it. You get to do it as a level 100 character. So it's gonna be really fun. Uh, we're gonna get new society quests for the Pelu Pelu people. This looks awesome. This is gonna be our Disciple of War quest. As you can see here, our uh, Viper character is talking to them. So we're gonna be starting with the Disciple of War society quest. Hildebrand. So you have till patch 7.15. So if you haven't still caught up on <laughs> Hildebrand quest, I highly suggest it. It is very goofy, very silly, but it is actually a very good quest line. Um, even though it is really silly, it's uh, quite entertaining. Some deliveries are also coming in 7.15, so please look forward to that. And um, there's a continuation of roll quests, which is coming in 7.16. Uh, so you still have a lot of time to catch up on your roll quests if you haven't gotten your characters to level 100 yet. Um, with the introduction of the society quest, that's a very easy way of getting your characters leveled up because they are daily quests. Then we have our uh, Wachu Meki Meki quest continuation. So this is going to be your crafters and gatherers um, continuing in 7.15. Then we have Hall of the Novice update. So for new players, this is going to teach you how to do mechanics. Uh, it's going to go over a variety of mechanics, so they've been updating this to go with the game. Uh, this is really good because they don't have that big of a system for this. So if you have ever gone into the Hall of a Novice, you will notice that uh, they're just, they didn't cover as many mechanics as they needed to. So they've obviously been updating this um, for the new challenges that are um, up and coming as well. So this is very good training if you haven't had any prior rating experience as well new housing update oh my goodness if you guys don't know this is huge literally massive okay so you can take the inside of your house no matter what size it is so you if you have a small plot of land you can turn it into the inside you can turn the inside into a small medium or large and that probably includes the item count so hey you can now all those people that purchased a large house you still have the advantages of a large house on the exterior so you get all three of your garden plots that is actually quite a bit if you're into the final fantasy 14 gardening um, that is actually still a huge advantage because it is still a very big money maker in this game 
Um, but as far as interior, it's mostly just for decorating. Uh, it doesn't really affect any other type of gameplay other than just what the house looks like on the inside. So if you are kind of salty about, oh, but I spent all this money on a larger medium house, don't worry. You still have to spend a lot of gill to transform the inside of your house to be a large house. So it's still going to be like probably the same amount anyways. There's a dome and mahjong update. Um, I don't really play this, but it looks like some uh, pretty cool updates. And uh, yeah, we got the new PvP gear coming in, um, which reminds me the PvP Series 6 is ending soon. So with the release of patch 7.1. All right, so get your reward, your mount, your squeak. That ki coyote is very cute. You get the umbrella and you get some of your uh, portrait designs. Uh, so if you don't know, you can claim your rewards from the series milestones. And if you haven't claimed them yet, they, they continue to carry over. But as soon as the new series starts, you won't be able to... Um, I think you can still claim them, but yeah, you won't be able to keep ranking up from the old series. It'll start over again. So here's the new mount from the uh, new... Uh, extreme trial so we got the wings so this is gonna be very cool new minions of course I wonder who this guy is <laughs> new emotes that looks all nice and as another uh, important update um, the Moogle tomes and the Fall Guys event all end at the release of patch 7.1 as well so if you haven't gotten your Fall Guys stuff done, or if you haven't even done this yet, there's still time. Uh, so you can go to the Gold Sauce for this one. And the Moogle Tomes is also ending. So you should probably get your donut earrings if you still want them. And uh, yeah, 7.1. As far as gear coming out and what to prepare for, let's go into that. Okay, for updates for Crafters and Gathering, we are going to be getting new higher eye level gear. So if you do want to prepare for that, you can get some of the materials ready. Uh, right now we don't know what the materials are going to be at this point. And uh, you might also want to stock up on your extra materia if you are going to be over melding. So some of the extra materials I have gathered are and crafted as well are going to be Black Star Thunder Yard Silk, Plural Walnut Lumber, and the Ra Kaznar Ingots. Uh, these are just a few. Not There's not really many items that are that difficult to craft right now, especially if you already have the max level crafting gear with materia melded into it and minimal over melds. It's all pretty easy to craft so far. If you are struggling to craft these, then you might be having some trouble crafting the new material. And uh, as far as gathering goes, and as with all major content patches, we're going to be getting new big fish. So if you are into legendary and big fish fishing, then you have something very exciting to look forward to. They haven't announced what it's going to be on the producer from the lover live you can bet that's gonna it's gonna be some fun fish to get not sure if there's gonna be new spearfish or not that's always hard to say if you do need anything that you want to gather specifically then I would get some of the new aether sands available so we have the sun gilt aether sand the myth loam myth roots and myth brine and you can watch this video over here if you haven't already figured out how to get all of them and they are all pretty easy to get especially now you also may need some of the timed gathering nodes so we have here the fine silver ore the harmonite ore have the Tirali alumen and for botanists we have the uh, Nepali flower as well as the Ipe log and the black seed cotton bowl that should be all of them yeah also rotation for those if you'd like to uh, hop on that as well but they are all pretty easy to get I also have a guide for that 
Okay, and the patch release dates for all of this content, 7.1, obviously, November 12th, 7.11, it's going to be November 26th, then 7.15 is December 17th, and then we have the Chaotic Alliance raids coming out one week after that, which would be December 24th, and then 7.16 is going to be January 21st. We're also going to be getting an update to our Glamour system, so if you have um, any coffers that give you a full set of gear, you're now going to be able to put all of those items from that set into a single slot in your Glamour dresser. And here's the Glamour, so we got outfit Glamours now, so it stores specific combinations of gear in the Glamour dresser as a single slot, so instead of it taking up five slots, now it only takes up a single slot be projected onto gear or added to glamour plates will primarily support level one glamours gear at this time um, must process entire ensemble of specified gear to store them as an outfit glamour okay yeah here's an example they're showing yeah it has a little icon there that's showing each piece inside that set and they have a new icon up here in the dresser Okay, so he's added this entire set to the character in the Glamour Dresser as a set, but was able to apply each piece individually. That's awesome, that's going to clean up a lot of space in our Glamour Dressers. You will have to go and like redo it yourself. Unfortunately, I don't think it'll do automatically. Looks like we're getting some pretty big PvP overhaul, so we're going to get the action and execution and hit detection update. Uh, right now, the hit detection was triggered at the time of action execution, so the timing of the hit detection will be will better match the visual effects, so it won't feel as laggy. Um, actions which feel more responsive with immediate hit detection will be addressed on an individual basis. And uh, they're also going to be doing an overhaul to some of the abilities and they're going to be doing some more balancing. Alright, so we got some major additions and adjustments to PvP actions. Addition and removal of PvP actions for each job. Significant balance adjustments. Certain limit breaks will receive adjustments to gauge charge, time, and more. Hmm. There's going to be adjustments to the frontline and rival wings, which, by the way, rival wings has been, <laughs> been, uh, they've been trying to fix it for quite a while now. So hopefully they can do something about that. Um, there's going to be adjustments, obviously, to the damage dealt and damage taken. So this will be very interesting for both, um, because frontlines I feel like is in a very good place right now. Rival wings, no. Uh, limit gauge charge time. This will be interesting. So if they increase it, that means there's going to be less engagement on the battlefields i think there needs to be more engagement on the on the battlefields especially frontline uh the more engagement in frontline the more fun it is and then they've got the machina functionality so this will be specific to rival wings uh right now they feel clunky they don't feel right um yeah it's it's a mess overall so looking forward to the changes that they're finally going to implement for rival wings they're going to be changing Crystalline Conflict arenas, so Cloud9 and Red Sands will have slightly different layouts, hopefully for the better. They've been playtesting this for a while now. Um, it does look interesting. So this is the before right here. Um, it looks, you know, it's, a, it's an okay layout. And here is the new layout. So it looks like there's going to be some visual changes between the walls, the line of sights. So here we have a line of sight um and these two walls so we're going to be able to hide around them and there's obviously the line of sight here it looks like this wall got extended in with this one but these areas are are bigger but they also have the walls in them i feel like this map needed that actually it's, it's basically, yeah, if you've ever done Crystalline Conflict, you know. <laughs> okay, and here's Red Sands. So, massive changes to the layouts. Let's take a look at that again. 
Okay. So we just have these shortcut paths right here and here. We technically have these sand paths with the oasis uh, here, which heals you. Um, and I don't think people really use those oasis unless they're doing like one-on-one -on -one duels. So it looks like we have more connection with these fast track lanes on both sides. And we connect these two points on each side. So mirrored, of course. Uh, the middle lane has been adjusted, so it's not offset. It's more right in the middle. I think this will be some much more interesting gameplay. We do have these mid shortcuts here on both ends. That will be very interesting because we go right to the points. It's going to be interesting going from your home base all the way to the shortcut point over here, though. I still think that's still too long but it's mostly how we'll feel in the gameplay itself. I've never really liked Red Sands map, actually. Um, always felt a bit too large for, for crystalline conflict. Like the pathing of the crystal, I think, is still the same distance, but the, the map diversity is really weird. But hopefully this changes all that. I, I mean, they've obviously significantly changed a bunch of this, so we'll see. Okay, this is huge for all of you uh, G-posers out there. Uh, camera behavior when the roll angle is rotated. Yes, finally, this will make sense. If you rotate the camera 90 degrees, it is so hard to control the camera to get that right angle. Because sometimes you want to take a vertical screenshot. Um, but like you have to move the mouse or your controller in such a weird way. Now it just feels more natural when controlling it, so this would be awesome. I am actually very excited about this change. I've taken several screenshots where I take like a really large vertical, so taking vertical screenshots like this is going to be really awesome. Uh, when I was taking this screenshot here, it was very hard to control the camera to get it into like the right position because while you're doing this, um, this is what you look like. So if you want to go up and down, you actually have to move your mouse like left and right instead of up and down. It's kind of weird because um, this is what the screenshot looked like after it's rotated. I think this was like a, I really like this shot. I think it was really cool. So for all you G posers and uh, in-game photogs for this, uh, this is going to be a much needed change. Copy settings to another character. So this is going to be a system update. You've got characters, HUD layout, macros, config settings, and more can now be copied to another character. This is actually really good because if you've been playing on one character and you have an alt account, you have to redo everything for that alt. So if you have all the special HUD, special macros done and stuff like that, um, you have to redo everything. So this will be a much needed change for those that have several characters. Now to split up to 10 quests at a time. I don't know if I like that change, but you know, it's available. Okay, so they're going to be, hopefully going to be addressing some of the skin colors with the graphic update adjustments. A lot of the players have been uh, saying that darker skin colors have not been showing up correctly. Um, they look much worse than they were before, and this graphic update was supposed to improve everyone. So hopefully this is what they are addressing. And we'll be getting an additional file of Fantasia, so those that changed or cha want to change back and it have to be redeemed from a specific NPC um, in 7.1x, so this is coming, but they don't know when. As always, stay hydrated, drink some water, be kind to someone today, even if it's being kind to yourself. Like this video if you liked it, give it a nice little thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, really helps me out and pushes it to the algorithm, you know, you know the whole biz. And uh, I'll see you in the live streams, bye for now.